Good afternoon, this is Mr. McGee and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to try to teach you how to graph your results from the lab the other day on Microsoft Excel. I'm going to try to move you all into the 21st century so I can teach you some skills that you can use not only in this class but also in your regular everyday life as an adult or even in your career or in college. So it's not just anatomy we're teaching here, we're also teaching you how to graph and use this in any other way. What I'd like you to do is make sure you have this template downloaded off of School Fusion, and you can see all the data from our class posted right in front of you there. So that hard work has been done. You can see these groups represent my four different classes. This is the first class here, groups one through eight. My next class had six groups or so in it. So you can see right here, this would be probably my next class. And we can go on and on and on. I just compiled them all together, and we have... 29 different groups or trials for every single variation of our independent variable. What we're going to do first is we need to calculate a mean. Now we could just do this by simply taking this in a calculator and adding them all up and dividing them by 29 groups. That would give us a mean, but Microsoft Excel makes this easy. You can simply just cl uh, click here, highlight all of your raw data, but you want to go one more box down and that will leave an empty box in which Microsoft Excel will calculate your mean. Go over here to AutoSum, click there, and click Average. And boom, it calculated a mean for all of our data. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the standard deviation. I recognize a lot of you probably forgot completely what that is, but I am told that all of you have learned this at some point, therefore I'm going to try to do a quick refreshment for you. Before we do that, let's calculate the standard deviation. To do this, click on an empty box, and we need to calculate the formula for this. To do this, go up here to the Functions tab, and you're going to have to go under the All, and you're going to have to go down and look for Standard deviation. In this case it's just stdev. Once you find it, click. And it'll tell you now you can highlight your numbers for that. So I'm going to click on the raw data in that first column I want to compute my standard deviation for. I'm going to click OK and voila! That is my standard deviation. I'm going to do it again just for one so you can get the idea. Click on the box you want it calculated. Go up here to Functions. Actually, it should be under my most recently used ones now, so uh, click on the box, click on Function, click on STDEV, and then you just highlight the raw data that you want to calculate, okay? And then click on it just like that. Easy way to do it. You could do that for each one of these, or a little shortcut, click on it since it is just a formula in there. You can click on that, and you can go to right-click Copy, or you can just go Control and C. That copies that formula. Then you just highlight and paste it wherever you want to. Control V is paste. Okay? With that being said, we now have our standard deviation and our mean calculated, and we are ready to make our graph. So if you would follow along, what exactly does a standard deviation mean? It's actually pretty simple. Before we get any further, let's show you what it means. Whoops. I took this little graph here just so I can kind of illustrate what exactly it means as a refresher to the rest of you. Let's take a look at this first one, 20.5. That means the average data here is 20.5. That's at the top of our bell curve. The standard deviation is 7.4. That means normal groups of people had high of 7.4 or they were below 7.4 from that mean. If you were, therefore, around 13 seconds, which is about 7.5 less than what our number was, if you were around 13 seconds, or you were up to almost 27 seconds, uh, 28 seconds, then you were still in the normal range for your group's time compared to everybody else. If you were, say, down uh, much farther, below that or above it, then you were outside of one standard deviation. And if you were really far out here, you would be considered an outlier. So standard deviation is simply just how high and how low away from the mean were the normal groups of data. 
essentially it gives us a range without keeping in tra uh, keeping track of the extreme outliers. So standard deviation is kind of taking the range but being a little bit more specific with it. That's why I like it in advanced classes but instead of using like the range down here. Let's go ahead and make that graph. To do the graph we need to identify our x and y axis. To do that here's our x axis to our graph. Click on the number of drops of hydrochloric acid. That is our x axis and we've highlighted it. And a lot of people mistakenly think all of this is our y-axis. Well, it is. But we want the total computation of all of this raw data, and that is our mean. We have our x-axis, so now you need to highlight the mean. But in order to do that, you click Control, and you click and highlight your mean. And now you can let go of Control. I have my x and y-axis. Let's go up here and make the graph. You go up to Insert and then you come over here to the graph options. We want a scatter plot, so I'm just going to click right here and click this little scatter plot button right there. Okay? And again, at any point, should you be lost, please go back and pause the video so you can follow through. Now, for sake of uh, space right here, I'm going to keep this graph relatively small. In fact, I'm going to move it over just a little bit, so, well, I'm going to keep it right here so everybody can see it a little bit better. We can make the graph a different size later. You can always click it and scale it and all that, but right now it's pretty good just to work on right here. First thing we're going to do, we need to go ahead and add a chart title. You guys can do this however you want to. Just click on the box and highlight or just click on the box and you can do your title up there. Give it a nice title. I'm just going to go blah, 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 blah. That is our title. It should be a descriptive title that describes what the graph is showing. That part I don't want to tell you. I'll let you guys pick it up. Next part, we need access labels. To do this, let's go ahead and click on the graph, just in case you haven't done that. Go over here to this plus sign. If you are using Microsoft Excel, uh, anything other than 2013, there is no plus sign. You have to go up here to find your formatting options, but it's virtually the same. For us on, in the computer lab, Click on this plus option here, and then you're going to come down here and go ahead and click on Access Titles. That will give us our Access Titles. We're going to go ahead and edit those, but before we do that, let's just get rid of these darn grid lines. I hate them when they're on the computer. We only really need grid lines when we're getting really specific or when we have graph paper. Okay, so we've got our Access Titles. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and add our Access Title in there. I'm going to add this one down here. I'm going to say number of drops of hydrochloric acid. Okay. And over here, I'm going to add our title of, I'm going to click on that box, and I'll just kind of control A to highlight it. And I'm going to make this title uh, time for disk to rise. And again, you can name this whatever you want to as long as it is descriptive. We do want a unit, and therefore, parentheses with an S, the number of seconds. Okay, now that we have that done, we have our axis labeled and our graph labeled. Now what we want to do is kind of format these rows and columns here. I'm looking at my y-axis. It looks pretty decent. It goes up to from 0 to, um, it goes up about 0 to 100 seconds, and it looks like it's pretty good, so I'm not going to mess with that. But let's look at our drops of HCl. We only have five increments, or six increments we might as well get it to format to that. Click on your uh, the numbers here on the x-axis and then we're going to go here and right click just like that. Go down here to format axis and it's a little different right now if you are on anything other than uh, Microsoft uh, 2013 but it's virtually the same. Okay now that we've right clicked and opened this up what you're going to do is we're going to make our graph, our x-axis, go all the way to 0 to 125. So 0 and 125. Okay? And we want it to go in increments of 25. So I'm going to make my major units that. We don't need to worry about minor units, simply because minor units are only used uh, uh, if there's actually tread lines, or I'm sorry, uh, little grid lines. Go ahead and X off of that. And look at that. We've got our new increments to our graph already in there and everything is in proportion. 
Okay, next thing we're going to do is we are going to go here and we are going to, we are going to go here and, uh, sorry, janitor came in. We are going to go here and we are going to actually, um, the janitor messed me up. I apologize. <laughs> I had to wave him off and say I was actually busy at this moment. Uh, next step to our graph. Let's go in here and add some error bars. To do that, click on your graph again and go back to the plus. And come here and click error bars. We don't actually want to click on this button here. It gives us some weird results. We want to click on this little arrow to the side and click here on more options. We're going to do this custom. Okay, to do this, make sure the it's selected for both directions and, and a cap on the end. It's almost always that way. And we're going to go to the bottom and click Custom. Specify value. I'm going to click on that. What it's telling us here is how high and low are these error bars going to be. We need to enter a positive and a negative value. And to do that, we're going to use our standard deviation as the high and the low values. What you do is come here click on the positive value box, click, and we're going to highlight the entire standard deviation. It's going to tell us that it's a positive value of all of those values. Click back here, and that enters our positive values. For negative values, you're going to click here, and you're going to do the same thing. Highlight the entire standard deviation box again. Click there, and boom, it should give us some nice error bars. And I'm going to exit off, and there we go. We've essentially told the computer that uh, this is our mean data point, 78.5, and we're telling the computer that our standard deviation or our normal range of student data is 34 above the 78 and 34 below the 78. That is what makes our range. Last thing we want to do on this part is we want to go over here and we want to add a tread line. Click back on the graph, come back over here, click on the plus, and we're going to go and add a tread line. Now, I don't want to add just a regular linear, so let's click over here again and do our more options. Okay? With uh, error bars and tread lines, it's better to do it kind of more of a custom way. We could do it linear, but I'm not so sure that graph is a linear graph. And this is kind of where you get to choose. What do you think it is? In this case, I think it's polynomial. I think it's actually showing a somewhat curved trend upward. And I'm going to click on polynomial. And you can change the order here to get it to fit the data as best as possible. Now, unfortunately, if you notice the end of our data, it's not perfect. It's actually got a lot of variance. So I can't really tell where it's going. I'm going to leave it at a 2 with us. Okay? And another thing, just for fun, click on Display Equation, and look at that. It puts an equation on the graph for us without doing any work. All right, and we're going to go ahead and click off of there. <clears throat> At this point, we pretty much have everything done, except I noticed that we should probably go back and fix it because it wants to go negative 25. So my apologies, I'm going to go here to minimum of 0. And you remember we set it to a maximum of 125. And I'm not sure why it's doing that. I haven't really... I'm used to Microsoft Excel 2010, and I think this one just has a little weird version to it. Okay, what you're going to do now is you can, I guess, behold your graph. We need to now post it in a word processor. So to do this, make it a size that fits your... Well, I guess that fits your uh, pleasure, I guess. I, that makes you... I guess, however, it's aesthetic to your function. And I also will make one comment that uh, these should not be here, these horizontal bars. Let's click on those horizontal bars and try to delete them. Unfortunately, it's not letting me do that either this time. These horizontal bars are kind of a product of Microsoft Excel's... Uh, no, I'm not even sure why they're putting them on there. As long as they're small and out of the way, I guess. Once upon a time, it used to let us click and delete them, but... Maybe I guess we can't. I'm still learning this new version, so cut me some slack here. I just just purchased it within the last month here, so I'm still learning why it's so much different than the older versions. All right, other than that, let's go ahead and copy this graph. Click on it, Control-C, or you can just right-click and copy. And let's go ahead and paste this into a word processor. Microsoft Word does a good job with that. Let's say I'm writing my lab report here, okay? 
here's my lab report and now I want to paste a picture okay what we're gonna do to paste a picture is you just go to right click and you have some paste options a lot of people make the mistake of pasting it with different formats and that makes it tough I just go to the mountain one paste as a picture click and now it's nice because we can scale this and it will adjust accordingly it's all to the same size or scale next thing you want to do is if you can go up here you can click on this graph again and go up to format you can go to wrap text and go in front of text and what's nice is now you can move this around your paper wherever you want to move it to so if you want to write your lab report there and put the graph somewhere else you can do just that okay this will conclude our lesson on how to use Microsoft Excel. We are going to try to do this again later with our osmosis lab to give you the hang of it, but hopefully this was a little start. Thank you very much, and good luck to everybody.